In section 7.2, I'm going to discuss systems with some numerical examples. In this first example, we have two ropes that support two blocks hanging at rest from the ceiling, and we are to determine the tension in each string. We'll start out by drawing a free body diagram showing the forces acting on each block. I'm going to color code it to indicate external forces with red arrows and blue arrows will indicate internal forces to the system. And we'll start out by uh, considering both blocks to be our system. So each block has uh, the weight acting down and weight is the force of gravity exerted by the earth and the earth is external to our two block system. Tension in string two is going to act between the objects within the system and so that is internal to our two block system. And then we have the external force tension in string one that's external to our two block system. Now, when we're considering the two blocks to be our system, tension two is internal. And remember, internal forces always cancel out and have no effect on the system, uh, on the system's motion. It's also important to keep in mind that the system is at rest. And that tells us that the forces are going to be balanced. And so here we have to just balance the external forces. The total force up is the tension in string one. And the total force down is just going to be the sum of the weights of the blocks. The 30 newtons from the weight of block one and the 110 newtons from block two. So that is a total of 140 newtons. Now, if we want to find the tension in string two, we're going to have to readjust what our system is. We can choose either the three kilogram or the 11 kilogram block. I'm going to consider just the 11 kilogram block to be the system. And that would make T2, the tension in string two, to be external to our one block system. And again, because the block is at rest, our system is at rest, the forces external to the system must be balanced. And so we then can say that T2, which is the total force up, has to equal the total force down, which is just the weight of the second block, 110 newtons. Okay, in this next example, we have a 1,000 kilogram truck pulling a 500 kilogram trailer, accelerating both to the right at two meters per second squared. We're to ignore drag and rolling friction. Okay, before we start in answering all these questions, we want to really look at the forces and decide whether they are internal or external to our system. So uh, for the truck and trailer system, we'll have a weight force acting down and that's external to the system because it's exerted by the earth. We'll have a normal force acting on the truck, which is external because it's uh, exerted by the ground on the truck. And then there's going to be an applied force pushing the truck forward, and that's external because that's applied by the ground. The ground is what's pushing the uh, truck forward. There's going to be a tension force acting backwards on the truck and forward on the trailer, and I drew that in blue to indicate that it is internal to the, the system. We'll have the weight of the um, of the trailer acting down, that's external, it's exerted by the earth, and we'll have the normal force acting on the trailer, that's the that's external because it's exerted by the ground. So to find the uh, net force acting on the truck trailer system, this is rather straightforward, we just need to use Newton's second law. Newton's second law says the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now we can apply this to a single object or we can apply this to a system of objects. And if we're applying it to our two uh, object system, the truck and the trailer, the, the mass is going to be the total mass or 1000 plus 500 times the acceleration, which is two meters per second squared. And so the uh, net force acting on the truck trailer system is going to be 3000 newtons.
the force, if I'm going to skip down to part D, what force is the truck generating? Well, the force that the truck is generating is this applied force. Really, it's the ground that's pulling it forward, but how does the truck get the ground to push it forward? It applies that same force backwards on the ground, but we're not considering forces on the ground. Now, we should note that the forces in the Y are going to cancel because there's no motion in the Y direction. Additionally, internal forces cancel out. So the only uncanceled force for our system is the applied force. That means that that applied force, the force that the truck is generating, is the net force on the system, on the truck and trailer system. That means that this is equal to that applied force, and so we already know our answer to part D. It's 3,000 newtons. I'm going to skip over to part B. What is the net force on the truck? Well, the net force on the truck I can calculate by using Newton's second law, mass times acceleration. But now if I'm only focusing on the truck, I'm going to use the mass of the truck only. And so we'll end up getting 2,000 Newtons. What's the net force acting on the trailer? Well, one more time, Newton's second law, F net is mass times acceleration. Here we're gonna use the mass of the trailer. The trailer has that same two meter per second squared acceleration. And so the trailer experiences a net force of 1000 Newtons. And we should note that the net force on the truck plus the net force on the trailer is the net force on the truck and the trailer. Okay. Now for part E, we want to find the force of tension in the rope that connects the truck and the trailer. And for this, we have to con uh, consider a different system because for the truck and trailer system, tension cancels out. And so we're going to consider just one of the uh, objects. We're going to look at the trailer because if we're just looking at the trailer, that means that the tension is external. And it's the only uncancelled external force. So that means this has to be equivalent to the net force acting on the trailer. That is 1,000 newtons because that's the same as the net force. This force provides the net force acting on the trailer. Very common in problems involving systems of connected objects are pulleys and a pulley is a wheel mounted to an axle that's designed to change the direction of a taut string or rope and when you have a problem that involves a pulley there's a very important step that you have to remember to do you have to remember to wrap your coordinate system around the pulley and what that does is it keeps the signs consistent so that when two objects that have the same uh, magnitude of acceleration, it makes the problem solving very difficult if they have opposite signs for their accelerations. And so you'll see that in action in the next example. For this last example, we have a system that's pictured below that shows In this last example, we have a system that's pictured that is free to move without drag or friction and we have to determine the net force on the system, the acceleration of the system, the tension in strings one and two. So again we're going to start out by drawing a free body diagram showing the forces acting on each object and again I'll color code the forces external to our system to be red and forces internal to the system to be blue. Starting with the 5 kilogram block, we have its weight acting down, that's equal to 5 times g, and a tension force acting up. Onto the cart, we have its weight acting down, that's external to the system exerted by the earth, and the normal force acting up, that is also external to the system, it's exerted by the table. We'll have a tension force acting to the left, and tension in string 1 is going to be internal to the system because it acts between the cart and the five kilogram block. On to um, 
uh, the tension in string two is going to pull to the right, and that's going to be internal because it also acts on our eight kilogram block, where on the eight kilogram block we have the tension two internal to the system and an external force uh, from the weight, and that's external because it's exerted by the earth. Now, when we're finding the net force, we also have to consider the direction of these forces. And since we have a pulley involved in the problem, we're going to have to wrap our positive direction around. And so you can see that I like to make the positive direction the direction that everything accelerates. And uh, I've indicated that positive direction along with each of our objects. So, in adding up the forces, we want to uh, ignore the forces that we know cancel out. And we know that the, uh, the normal force and the weight on the cart are going to cancel out because the cart does not move vertically. Those forces are still there, but they're canceled out. So they have no effect on the motion of the system. Likewise, internal forces, the tension in strings one and two are internal. And so they were, are going to cancel for the system. So the only two effective forces uh, that we're going to have to add up are the weight of the 8 kilogram block and the weight of the 5 kilogram block. Notice that this weight acts in the positive direction, so we're going to give that a positive sign. And notice that this acts opposite the positive direction, so we're going to have to give that a negative sign. And so for part A, the net force acting on the system, we're just going to add up all the effective forces. We'll have 8G acting in the positive direction, and we'll have 5G acting in the negative direction. So this gives us a net force of 3 times G, and remember that G is 10, so this is going to be 3 times 10, or 30 newtons. So for part B, to find the acceleration of the system, we're going to take Newton's second law that says the acceleration is the net force over the mass, and we're going to apply it to our three-object system. Here, the net force we determined to be 30 Newtons, and the mass is going to be the sum of the masses of our three objects. So the mass we need to use here is going to be 5 plus 12 plus 8, which is a grand total of 25. So the acceleration is going to be 30 newtons divided by 25 kilograms or 1.2 meters per second squared. Now, when we go to determine the, string, uh, the tension in strings one and two, we're going to have to consider the tension to be external if we're going to calculate it. And so we're going to have to consider a different system. So uh, rather than considering all three objects together, we can just uh, sort of ignore the cart. You could use the cart if you want, but we're going to uh, consider just the five kilogram block all by itself to find tension in string one, and then the eight kilogram block all by itself is a different system to find the tension in string two. So uh, we're going to use Newton's second law that says the net force is going to equal m times a and now the net force is going to be tension one minus the weight the mass we need to use here is going to be five since we're applying this to the five kilogram block and we calculated the acceleration on the last slide to be 1.2 five times g that's going to be 50 and 5 times 1.2 is 6. So the tension in string 1 is going to be 50 plus 6, or 56 newtons. We're going to do a similar thing for the uh, tension in string 2. Again, I'm going to use Newton's second law, F net equals MA, and we're going to be applying this to our 8 kilogram block. 
When we add up the forces, though, we have to keep in mind that the 8 kilogram block is acting in the direction of the acceleration. So that the acceleration is going to be put in as a positive number, so 8g has to go in as a positive value. T2 is going to go in as a negative value because it's acting opposite the positive direction. And then the mass is going to be 8. The acceleration is 1.2. So just a little bit of algebra here. Um, 8 times g, that's 80. And 8 times 1.2 is 9.6. Sorry, typo. That's 9.6. And the tension in string two is going to be 80 minus 9.6 or 70.4 newtons.